Who makes the best 15 inch laptop? We have Dell's new XPS 15 right here and Apple's M2 15 inch MacBook Air. Now here are the specs and you see the Dell is 2,850 bucks compared to 1,700. So no, MacBooks are not that expensive. But we will see if that money is worth it because we're comparing everything from the design to ports, the displays, speakers, and of course the performance. Let's start out with the external design and the Dell looks very similar to what they've been doing for a while. I'm gonna stack it on the MacBook right over here. And you guys can see that it is actually smaller than the 15 inch Air. But if we compare the thickness, the MacBook is basically the same thickness as just the bottom part of the XPS. And if I hold them, side by side like this, the MacBook is so much lighter. We have 3.3 pounds compared to 4.4, but of course Dell is packing a lot in here, including an 88 watt hour battery compared to 66. Now we'll talk about battery life in just a bit, but of course the XPS also has fans built in for that powerful processor and graphics compared to the completely fanless MacBook. Now as far as ports, I love that we have the MagSafe connector on the MacBook. It will connect here. Very convenient. With the Dell, you just have USB-C for charging, but they give you this crazy big 130 watt power adapter, and that should say something about the performance built in. Now, both have two USB-Cs on the side. They are both Thunderbolt. And on the other side, we have headphone jacks, but the XPS also comes with another USB Type-C port and an SD card reader. Apple, why could you not build one into this? I mean, maybe because it's so thin, I don't know. <laughs> now on the inside, I love that the Dell has Windows Hello, so it can just automatically log you in. Of course, both of these have fingerprint scanners for security. And as far as the keyboards, I've been using this XPS, and I have to say that I prefer its keyboard over the MacBook Airs. It just has a little bit more travel, but as far as trackpads, the XPS cannot compete with the MacBook's magnetic trackpad, it feels much better than the standard diving board design. Now the new Air has a six speaker system built into it, which is pretty impressive, whereas the XPS has a quad speaker system, so let's go ahead and compare them. Wow guys, you heard that difference for yourself. I am impressed. This thing sounds so good, better than XPS 17's did in the past. So Dell listened, not only is it much louder, a lot louder, I thought I was gonna peak it, it sounds good overall. I would definitely take the XPS speakers. Now, as far as webcams, the MacBook Air has a 1080p webcam built in, while the Dell still has a 720p webcam. Let me know which one looks better and which one sounds better down in the comments. Now, as far as the displays, we have a lot of differences. Both of them are 16 by 10, and the Dell has these super slim bezels on the side. It is slimmer than the slim ones on the Air already, but the resolution on this Dell is really high. It's 3.5K compared to 2.8. Not only that, but it is also an OLED compared to regular LCD. Now, as far as brightness, the OLED hits 400 nits compared to 500 on the LCD, so it's a little bit less bright, but it has really good anti-reflectivity coatings to help with bright environments. Now the huge positive is the contrast levels because it is an OLED display and looking at this HDR footage, the Dell looks really, really good. I mean, it looks incomparably bright while having great contrast and then when the lights are off, the LCD screen on the MacBook is just really great. You don't have that peak brightness 
the Dell looks incredible. As far as detail, it looks really good as well. Uh, the brights just really pop. And then with that speaker system, I mean, this is gonna be a killer movie watching experience. And now let's get into performance. I'm gonna start out with an SSD speed test. We have one terabyte compared to 512. Now this one is the upgraded one. So you have your full performance. And one interesting thing is with the Dell, you can actually go up to eight terabytes compared to maxing out with two on the MacBook Air. And look at that. Oh my goodness, we just got the read speed in here. 7,137 compared to 3,466. More than, what, more than twice the speed? Yeah. That's insane. And for the write speed, 6,300 compared to 3,400. Close to double the performance. Wow, this is actually faster than like a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Impressive. And now opening up Geekbench 6 here, we see that we have the i7-13700H. This thing goes up to 4.8 gigahertz for the top. And we have 14 cores compared to eight cores. We also have 32 gigs of RAM compared to 16, but I know from previous testing, 16 gives you full performance. And with the MacBook, you can only go up to 24 gigs maximum, but of course it is unified memory. So it's a little bit more efficient. And we have our score here as far as single core the MacBook does beat it out 2600 compared to about 2500 but multi-core the XPS is beating out the M2 chip by just a little bit as you guys notice though the XPS is unplugged now I did have it in high performance uh, mode in the window settings and in the Dell settings the extreme or ultra performance but let's go ahead and plug it in and we'll see what we get and look at that guys that is a nice bump. We have 12,265 compared to 9894. The MacBook performs the same whether it's on battery or plugged in. So that's a difference of about 25%. That also tells us if you want maximum performance, well, you need to have it plugged in. Now, what about graphics performance? Of course, we have the M2 chip. This is the 10 core unbinned compared to the RTX 4070 built into the XPS. I'm gonna go ahead and start this benchmark here. Now, an interesting thing with this Dell, it's a 40 watt version of that. So it's a little bit downclocked for this thin and lightweight 15 inch design. Now the M2 chip uses roughly half of that power. It's very efficient, but let's see what we get. We have 45,607 metal score on the air and on the EXPS, 92,397 for the OpenCL. Um, that is what, double? A little bit more than double? Very impressive. And then unplugged, we have 82,000. So at that point, it is a little bit less than double, but that's still very impressive. The drop was basically 10,000 going onto battery power. So it's still maintaining a lot of that performance. Now, what about gaming performance? I have 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Unlimited here, and it looks like we have 90.7 FPS compared to 41.3, more than double on the XPS plugged in. This thing is impressive. And then running it again on battery power, we have 68.1. Now we constantly talk about performance when it's on battery. And in this case, yes, that did drop quite a bit, but when it is still much more powerful than a MacBook, I'm not gonna complain about that because in the past it would be much slower and it's a laptop, you're gonna use the unplugged. So I would say when performance is good, that is still nice. But what about some real world productivity programs? I have Blender opened up right here with the Party Tug project and the speed difference is insane. The MacBook took four minutes, 52 seconds compared to 58.9 seconds, literally five times faster. And the crazy thing is when I unplugged it, it took a minute 13, and that's because of the RTX graphics and the ray tracing cores that enable it to be incredibly fast. And now I have Adobe Lightroom opened up with 50 edited high resolution images and shifting between these, looks like sometimes the XPS is faster. So far, it's winning it most of the time. We have that great performance. Of course, that super fast SSD. And now let's do an AI test. 
course, the MacBook Air has that Neuro engine built in. So this is gonna try to find the background and click it at the same time. Bam, the MacBook there was about twice as fast at this task. What about enhancing this image? Let's open that up. We'll run super resolution, which I love using. Wow, that was really close. The MacBook beat it out by about a second, but pretty close there. And now let's export all 50 of these edited images. I got rid of that extra one and let's see what happens. Wow, the MacBook seems to be flying here and it's the one that's on battery. Of course, with the XPS, if you unplug it, you will lose a bit of performance. And just to make sure I check that the Dell is using its graphics quite a bit of it to help. Bam, the Dell just finished and look at this guys. We have two minutes, 43 seconds, almost two minutes, 44, compared to a minute and 17. Basically double the performance on the MacBook. That is crazy and that shows off the benefits of the unified memory architecture even when you have 16 gigs. Now I have to point out that the MacBook is fanless. So if say you had 500 of these tough images instead of 50, it would start to throttle and slow down. But in that case, it would still be faster than this XPS and that is impressive. So for photo editing, the MacBook definitely takes the win. Now, what about your standard day-to-day -day experience? I have Speedometer 2.0 opened up right here and I'm running it. It's flashing fast on all of them. This tests your web browsing performance for web-based applications like a lot of people use. And looking at the scores, we have 329 compared to 428. So the MacBook is definitely snappier for web-based applications, but 329 is still a good score. And now I have DaVinci Resolve 18.5 open for video editing. Editing. And here I have a 4K project with color correction, LUTs applied, film grain, and both these laptops are gonna have no issues processing this. One thing that surprised me is how much of the graphics performance is needed to do this in real time. We have about 32% compared to about 34, 32. So the RTX graphics in this, well, your overhead and the extra performance you have for more effects they line up very similarly. And now let's go ahead and export this five minute project um, on the XPS. I'm using NVIDIA's encoders, which are very fast. And look at that, they were so close here, but the XPS beat out the MacBook a minute 22 seconds compared to a minute 27. Of course, that is with it plugged in and the fans going uh, off. I'm gonna try this with it unplugged just to see what it says. And now it's giving us an estimate of about two minutes, 15 seconds. So it gets a lot slower on battery power, but I figure if you're gonna be rendering, you'll probably find a plugin for that. Overall, I have to give the video editing win to the MacBook because I was not expecting the performance to be pretty much identical, even though you have half the graphics performance, 16 gigs of RAM, it's fanless, and it's super thin. And of course, you also have the ProRes decoding and encoding uh, chips that are built in. Uh, but the XPS has gotten a lot faster compared to previous generations. And now let's talk about the battery life. Our MacBook wasn't even 100% charged when we started, and now it's down to 50 after all of these tough tests. Whereas the XPS, even though we only had brief amounts when we had unplugged, it's at 93%. This thing sucks power. If you're doing tough things like we were testing, you're gonna get two hours of battery life compared to about six to eight on the air. This thing just sips power. Now, as far as real world usable battery life, we're looking at six hours for the XPS and 12 hours of mixed use for the MacBook Air. This thing is super, super efficient. And another reason is the XPS not only does it use a lot more power for the CPU and the graphics, but the display also takes a lot of juice. And if you would go for the cheaper 1080p LCD option, well then you'll gain about three hours of real world battery life and you'll save quite a bit of money. But of course this display is amazing. It is so nice to have. And you get six hours compared to a long time ago where you'd get more like three to four with the older processors. So to answer the original question, who makes the best 15 inch MacBook or 15 inch laptop? Is it the MacBook or the XPS? Well, it is tough because 
The MacBook Air is fanless. It's super thin and light and has incredible battery life while still having really good performance. But the XPS really surprised me. It is more expensive and of course you can cut down on the SSDs, uh, the RAM, you can save some money there, but it is such a nice machine. The speakers blew me away. The display is incredible. The performance on, on battery power is way better than in previous generations. And overall, I would have to give the win to the Dell XPS. If you want the best 15 inch laptop, I would say it is the XPS, as long as you don't need Mac OS. And a lot of people need Windows. So Dell has done a fantastic job on this machine. But if you're looking for the battery life and the thinness, uh, then the MacBook definitely does a killer job and it is less expensive as well. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.